Good morning, Pantano, and happy Easter. Go ahead and grab a seat. We are so excited to have you with us today as we are celebrating the hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus. And I just wanna welcome you if you are new or newish to Pantano, maybe today is your first day uh, here with us and maybe a friend uh, bribed you with free breakfast, but we're just excited that you're here. And if you are new, we would love to know that you're with us. And to do that, I wanna ask you to pull out your phone and text the word Pantano to 31996. And we'll send you a link to fill out our digital connect card. And that's just a way not only for you to tell us that you're here, but also for us to be able to follow up with you and to help you take your next steps in your spiritual journey, regardless of what those might be, because we believe that if you're here today, God has a next step for each and every one of us. And so uh, while you're doing that, I wanna let you know a couple of things that are happening today, just to let you know. One, we are celebrating baptisms today. And yeah, that is so exciting. It has been incredible today watching just the stories of life change unfold in baptisms in the first two services. And I know this service is, is gonna be just as incredible. And so uh, Pastor Glenn's gonna share some information about that towards the end of the service today. Uh, but that's, baptism is that step where we proclaim the change that Jesus has made in us. And what a day to do that, but on Easter, what an incredible opportunity for that. Um, as well, um, we have free food. Um, and if you are here on campus, um, I know my kids, we have teenagers, so my kids were excited about getting their second breakfast today. And so um, if you haven't eaten yet, or maybe if you have, but we would love just to spend some time hanging out together in our courtyard, just being together. If there is something we have lost in this last year, it is just that being together. And what a great opportunity to do that together on Easter. And lastly, every week at Pantano, we celebrate communion. And communion is that moment in our service where we as followers of Jesus remind ourselves of the sacrifice that Jesus made in our place and then that he rose from the dead. And one of the things that's incredible on this Easter, whether you're here in the room or at home, the resurrection of Jesus is a reminder to us that hope is always there, that hope is never lost. And I know many of us walked in here today and maybe you've had just a really, really hard year and hope just feels like it is gone. Maybe God feels silent or absent to you, but the resurrection reminds us that hope is never lost. And so I hope you experience that today. That's our goal for you to experience the hope of Jesus. So if you're here, hopefully you grab some elements for communion on the way in. If not, you can get those in the lobby. And if you're with us at home, this would be a moment for you to get those elements ready. So when we get to that point in the service, you're ready. So let's pray together as we just continue this morning. So Father, I thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your son to die in our place, but he didn't stay dead. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, you raised him from the dead so that we can experience life and hope everlasting. And so I pray, regardless of where we are on our journeys today, Father, I pray that your spirit would speak to each one of us and show us that hope is never lost. In your name, amen. We stand back up with us as we celebrate together. I cast my mind to Calvary. Where Jesus bled and died for me, I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. Oh.
and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. church from the front to the back, every home, wherever you are today, can we lift our, our praise up to the one who deserves it all, only you, Jesus, forever and ever you deserve the praise. Happy Easter, everyone. Wow, and so glad you've joined us here in person and, and online. And today we celebrate an event that changed and transformed all of human history. God raised Jesus from the dead. He's alive. The stone was rolled away. The tomb is empty. And Jesus appeared to more than 500 people. And since that time... Everything in our lives in human history has been changed and transformed. Why is Easter this turning point? Earlier we sang a song. It's called Death Was Arrested. And I want to just read to you the opening words of that song again because this reminds us why. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin, lost without hope, with no place to begin, your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began. When God raised Jesus from the dead, it gave us a hope. It gave us actually a confidence that, that, that we could have a new life. But before we celebrate Easter and the new life that it brings, we have to talk about an event that allowed Easter to even happen. And, and, and we have to face the reality of that, and that was that Jesus had to die before God could raise him from the dead. And this past year, it, in many ways, has been an experience of a lot of death for, for some of us. Probably uh, almost every one of us here uh, know at least a family that lost a, a loved one, uh, maybe to COVID, maybe to other things. I, I have mourned with so many families this year. And there's not only th that kind of loss, but there are other losses that we've experienced this last year. Some of us have lost jobs. Some have lost income. 
Our students have lost the experience of being in person in school and missing their friends and sporting events and, and, uh, and extracurricular activities, and, e- and some even miss their graduations. Some of us have missed vacations or special time with, with our loved ones and family. We, we, we've experienced various kinds of loss just through our normal routines and, and the free, some of the freedoms that we've lost over this last year. And And then there's not only the things that this last year brought that were unique, but then there's just all the normal losses in life. Uh, uh, This past year, uh, someone that's very close to to me and very dear to me uh, decided to cut off the relationship completely. And uh, and you know, when relationships die, it's, it's incredibly painful. Yet here we are today, Easter 2021, A day of joy, it's a day of celebration. But before we get to that celebration and that hope, there's an irony here. And we have to look at that that Easter was built on a tragic event. Jesus had to die a cruel, painful death on a Roman cross. And, and, and that's the experience, though, of humanity. It, it's the normal human process that we have to go through some kind of loss, some kind of death, so to speak, before we can get to that which is better, that which is new, that which is fresh. That, that's how life works. Death and loss precedes new beginnings. Sometimes we have to let go of of bad relationships in order to form new and healthier ones. Sometimes we have to let a a career die before we can allow a a new career to be created that's much better in, in, in any number of ways. Life is a series of many deaths. And they're painful. But they're necessary before we can get to new beginnings for them to be birthed in our life. And so our hope and celebration on Easter is based on the fact that before Good Friday, excuse me, before Easter Sunday, there had to be a Good Friday. There had to be that moment when Jesus was willing to die for our sins. And and death isn't feared because death wasn't the end for Jesus. And just as death is not the end for Jesus, neither does death have to be the end for those who trust in Jesus. Now, I know some of you are thinking, it's Easter. Why is the pastor talking about death? And I get it. But that's where we have to start. Because Easter is not Easter without honestly looking at death first. So just a little bit more about death. As I'm talking about death, I'm talking about two kinds of death. One is a spiritual kind of death. And the other is a physical death. And if if we ignore either of those, it's a huge mistake because what it can actually do is end up costing us our ability to really live now and ultimately forever. And so the first kind of death is, is what I call a spiritual death. And, and by spiritual death, what we mean by that is that it's not a physical death, but it's where you're alive, sort of, but not really living. When we're, when, we're, when we're dead inside or when we're in the process of dying inside, it, it means maybe we've lost a passion for a purpose, a cause. We, 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 we don't really have a meaning for, for what life is all about. It, it can also happen when, when our compassion for others, for some reason, for, for, for in some way, just, just dies. Th- that, that internal death can happen when, when we're just emotionally dead. We've lost our joy. We are unable to experience real lasting joy. It also happens uh, when, when we have these self-defeating thoughts that, that keep just nagging at us and, and, and beating us down and, and ultimately wear us down and, and destroy our heart. It's when we exclude or ignore God from our lives and, and we miss having a living relationship with the living God. Author um, Norman Cousins describes death that exists while we're still alive this way. I I love this quote. He says, death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss is what dies inside us while we live. 
We can allow hardships, for example, to, to bury a dream. We can, we can let fear keep us from taking a risk. And, and because we're unwilling to take a risk, then we don't really experience what it is to, to make a difference in, in partnership with God. We just don't care about the things that God cares about. And we can let a myriad of things slowly diminish our faith and our trust in God. And the, and the Bible describes this death while we're still alive kind of deal uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 2. I, I want to read it, uh, this, Ephesians chapter 2, the first five verses from the message trans, translation. It says this, it wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it. All of us doing what we felt like doing. We, we, whenever we felt like doing it, all of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with a whole lot of us. Instead, God Immense in mercy and with his incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. That's awesome. But where it started was, was this reality that we were stuck in our sin-dead lives. We, we were following the way of the world, which basically is we were just doing whatever we wanted to do. I love the way this, this translation describes it. We, we filled our lungs with, with polluted uh, uh, unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. But God's love is stronger and deeper. And so he reaches out to us. He embraced us. His love was so deep and profound that, that, he, that he loves us so much that as he's embracing us, as he sent Jesus to us, what he wants to do because of his love is to give us real life, to make us alive again. And only the living God can rescue us from a sin-dead life and help us discover what real living is all about. Easter is what brings good news. Because Easter is about a power that can raise dead people to life. I want to read again that last part of Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 4 and 5. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and what? And made us alive in Christ. Now what, what, what makes us spiritually dead or spiritually dying? there's so many things that, that can happen that, that cause us to get distracted from the things of God. But when Jesus wants to come and make us alive, what he's doing is he's not going to make us just a little bit better. He, he's not going to just take a little edge off our anger or just improve our attitude a little bit or make us just a little bit kinder. And all of that is good, and all of that happens as we, as we truly make a commitment to follow Jesus. But, but it's more than that. It's about Jesus taking our cold, dead hearts and doing the miracle of making them alive again as we trust Jesus and as we invite the Spirit into our lives where, where we can experience God in, in, a, in our daily lives, that we see him at work in us and around us. It's having a purpose and a mission with passion, but without the God's spirit active in us, we're dead, even though we walk around as though we're alive. And I mentioned there's two kinds of deaths. I've just described the spiritual death. And the other one is the physical death, that time when we cease breathing and, and our heart stops. And none of us can escape that death. But it doesn't have to be the end of life. I love these words of Jesus found in John chapter 5, verse 24. And twice in here he says, very truly. Whenever Jesus says very truly, he's saying, really listen. Really pay attention. Matthew 5, or John 5, 24, he says, very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word 
and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and now and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. When we focus on Jesus, when we believe him, when we trust him, when we choose to follow him, we can have life right now. He says this is happening right now. And what he said is that when we trust him, we cross over from death to life. And when we cross over from death to life, that means there is no judgment, which is describing his complete forgiveness of all of our mistakes, all of our failures, all of our sin. And the moment we believe and start following Jesus, we cross that line from death to life. We start eternity that moment. Eternity, life begins that moment we start following Jesus and continues through our physical death into the eternity as Jesus provides us a resurrected body that will never die again and will always be in God's presence. Don't miss what Jesus is saying. The very moment that you believe and trust him, that you commit to following Jesus. You have crossed the line. You've crossed the line from death to life. And so the question is this. Do you really want to live? I want to encourage you, don't just celebrate Easter here and maybe go home later and have a, have a meal with your family or friends and maybe do an Easter egg hunt or, or whatever it is that, that you do on Easter and, and, and stop there because just celebrating Easter doesn't give us life. What gives us life is the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead who is, wants to live in us to give us life today. So choose life with him. Choose to cross over from death and really live this Easter. Here's how the Apostle Paul describes this, this power, the power of the resurrection to help us live both now and after we physically die. It's found in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Paul writes, and if the spirit of him, Jesus, who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because his spirit who lives in you. The same spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead lives within us and, and gives us life. Life now and life after death. If we invite him in, if we invite him to have influence in our life, the spirit of God is so powerful that the spirit can help us really, really live. Maybe you decided to follow Jesus a while ago. Maybe it was a long time ago. Maybe it was more recently. But today you find yourself at that place where you're just spiritually dead or you can just feel yourself dying inside. You're, you're bored. You're apathetic. You feel this distance from God. You, you feel alone. There's no passion for the things of God. You lack a purpose and meaning. You just go through your daily routine. You've silenced or quenched the work of the Spirit in your life. You've stopped growing. You don't find yourself becoming more and more like Jesus, like you did at one time. And You still love Jesus. You still believe the Bible's true. You still attend church. But you're just doing life on your own. That's what being spiritually dead looks like. But there's hope. Because we serve a God who's living. The Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is still alive and is working in our lives. And so the place that we have to begin is just to admit to God that we're dead inside. That's the beginning place. That's the starting point. We admit that, 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 that we're just dying inside and we invite the Holy Spirit to begin to do his work changing us from the inside out. We ask the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, 
to help us take that next step of obedience, whatever that might be. And I just want to encourage you to, to pray this prayer. It's a simple prayer, but it's a profound prayer when prayed with sincerity. And it's simply this. Come, Holy Spirit. Have your way with me. Come, Holy Spirit. Have your way with me. Or, or maybe you've never invited Jesus to, to have any influence in your life. Maybe you, you've, you've, you've just kind of put that off or, or, or just aren't sure about this. There is no better time than on Easter Sunday than to make the decision to follow Jesus, to surrender to him, to turn your, the control of your life over to him, to trust him to such an extent that you're truly willing to follow his way and, get, and let him have his way with you. It means saying yes to Jesus. And when we say yes to Jesus, that's when the very spirit of God comes and lives within us and changes us and transforms us as we choose to follow Jesus. And then once we make that decision to commit ourselves to, to Jesus and his way, when we choose to follow him, the next step that we take is a step that, that makes that commitment public. We, we say to God that we're ready to follow Jesus to the best of our ability. It's not about doing it perfectly. That never will happen, this side of eternity, but about truly following Jesus. And we make that commitment in something called baptism. And baptism is a picture of the very thing we've been talking about. It's a picture of death and resurrection. It's a symbol of that. A person who's being baptized stands in the water, and what they're doing as they're standing there is they're saying, I'm ready to die to my old way of life. I'm ready to die to when I was in charge, doing life my way. And the person is, is gently lowered into the water to come out of that, to resurrect, so to speak, to begin a new life, a fresh start following Jesus in, in his way. And that's then when God begins to do his work because we've invited the spirit of God to live in us as he begins to change us from the inside out. And today we're going to have some folks who want to be baptized and make that commitment. And if you're at that place, I invite you to join them in making that commitment and that promise to God in, in, in baptism. And, and, and here's, here's how it's going to work. In just a moment, we're going to sing a song. And as we sing, we, we stand. And that'll give you an opportunity to be able to go into our lobby, go out the doors here to the lobby, and there'll be some folks there that'll help you. And we've got everything ready for you. We've got a whole room set up with private changing rooms, uh, clothes to be baptized in, towels, everything you need, and folks to answer any questions you have. So if you're ready to be baptized today, in just a moment, as we're standing, as we're singing, just go into the lobby, and, and some folks will be there to help you and prepare you with whatever you need. The, the, Work through any excuses you have. This is the day to choose life. Choose to cross over from death and really live this Easter. And you might be hesitant because you think, you know what, I'm not good enough. I don't know enough yet. And probably both of those are true. You know what, though? You'll never be good enough. Jesus loves you as you are. And what happens is, is this is a beginning. This is a starting place. You're not good enough, but it, not until you invite the Spirit of God in you that you're going to see real change and transformation happen. And of course, you don't know enough. That only happens as you walk with Jesus. It, you begin the journey of faith, and then you'll learn and understand more as you go. But today is an opportunity for a new start. Maybe you, you're thinking, oh, I, I was baptized as a baby, and and, and to be baptized now as I'm older, I, I don't want to dishonor my parents, and, and, and I totally understand that, but that's not what it is. When we're baptized, when we know what we're doing, when we make the decision to do it, we're actually fulfilling the very desire that our parents had for us. Now we're ready to make that decision for ourselves. So don't let anything hold you back. 
And if you're with us online, you're wondering, how can we do that? Let us know. We'll work with you. We can help arrange a baptism wherever you're at here in the States or wherever you're at around the world. And we'd love to be able to partner with you and help you. Just let us know that you need some help with that. So when we sing, just go back to the lobby and some folks will be there to help you. If, if you have family or friends that came with you, uh, you're welcome to join them, support them. Uh, just go with them out to the lobby and you can celebrate with them. What we're going to do is the baptisms will be outside and then we'll be able to see that in, in here through video and we'll be able to celebrate that with, with those who are, who are making that, that commitment. So here's an opportunity, an opportunity to choose life. Choose life by choosing to follow Jesus. Let's stand as we sing, and if you're ready, go on back to the lobby.
Jesus Christ provided life. He brought death and He crushed it, death to death, and He offers us free life, life that is real. He took the broken pieces of us and He puts them back together. I hope you have your elements of communion ready, whether you're here uh, in the room or you're watching online, if you'll get those ready. In a moment, we're gonna receive communion together. In the 1600s in England, uh, there was a, an incredible cathedral called the Winchester Cathedral. And uh, it had a massive, massive wall of beautiful stained glass that they had built and artists had created telling a story. And during a civil war that happened in, in 1600, this massive, beautiful work of art was crushed, was broken to pieces, nothing left, just pieces and fragments of what was. After the war was over, after this battle was, was done in that area, the people of that town, of that community, they gathered and they came to this cathedral and they picked up every single little piece, every broken fragment, they gathered it all and they began to rebuild this beautiful work of art. It wasn't the same, they didn't make the same picture, it was a mosaic, but many people said that it was more beautiful because of what it had gone through. That it was more beautiful but because the people put it together. Jesus did the very same for you and I, in our lives. Our lives were broken beyond repair. Our lives were shattered in pieces. And maybe some of us still are. And Jesus is the only one that can put that back together. He's the only one that can make something beautiful out of this brokenness. I'm gonna invite you to have a seat and uh, in a moment I'm gonna just pray and you can spend some time with him, just maybe gratitude and, and thanks and just prayer. But I'm gonna invite you to, to take the elements when you're ready. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the work of Jesus Christ. We thank you that, Jesus, you are obedient to the will of the Father, even unto death and death on a cross. Would you once again remind us that 2,000 years ago you began to say, I can put your life back together. And you're saying it to us now. Give me the pieces, give me the brokenness, give me all of the junk, and I'll make something beautiful out of it. Thank you for Easter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. think of no better way to, uh, to finish and end our, our service this Easter than celebrating an amazing thing that God is doing, the great things God is doing. We have an incredible group of people who responded today and they're saying yes to Jesus. They're saying yes to surrendering their lives. 
and we just invite you to stand and join us. We're gonna celebrate big. Here's how we do it at Pantano. We celebrate big because we believe it's the most important decision that you could ever make. So would you stand with us? Let's do it. Church, we're not done yet. Come on, keep giving God praise in this place.
seated, please. Death was arrested. Jesus is alive. We can really live. That's what it's all about. Thank you for being here today. And remember, it's not about Easter. It's about choosing life. Allowing the Spirit of God to give you life now and forever. I want to invite you back next week. Next week, we're starting a new teaching series. I mean, you have to listen to this carefully. It's called Should Happens. You see, we carry a lot of things on us that we think we should do or, or, or ways we should be. And others put all these things that we should do and be on us. And, and then we, in turn, do that to others. We, we, we think others sh- should do this or should be this way. And, and, and we even go so far as to put our expectations on God, that God should be this way or should do this or that. And so we're going to look at this whole idea because there are some things, there are some things that we should do and there are some things that we should be, but how do we sort through all of that mess to identify what God really wants for us and be free to live according to him only and not all these other expectations? And so I want to encourage you to come back and join us for that series. Uh, this is a great series to invite your one to join you with as well. And we'll begin that next week. And also, on Wednesday, April 14th, we're starting a new group, a new course, a new class called Alpha. Alpha has actually been viewed and, and participated in all over the world, over 150 countries, millions and millions of people. And what Alpha is, is an opportunity to discover what faith is all about. Who is Jesus? What does it mean to follow Jesus? How do we experience life with God? What does faith really look like? How do we discover meaning and purpose? It's an incredible course, uh, and you don't want to miss it. If you're just exploring faith, this is a great way to begin. It's a safe place where you can ask lots of questions, be who you are, as well as learn in a safe environment. It's also a great course to invite uh, your one to join as well. We're going to do it both online and in person starting Wednesday, uh, April 14th. And if you want to find out more about it or sign up on that, you can just text Pantano to 31996, Pantano to 31996. And if you're here in person, you can go out to the courtyard uh, by room number three out there. There's a, a table there. You'll see the big red uh, signs with a question mark on them. That's the alpha table, and they can, they can answer any questions, or you can sign up there as well. So uh, I encourage you to consider Alpha. It's an incredible course. You don't want to miss that as well. And then and then finally, uh, if you're new and, and we'd love to get acquainted with you, myself and some others will be at room number one, starting point, right after the service. Come on over. We'd love to meet you, help you figure out your next steps in your journey, wherever you might be. And, and, uh, uh, and also, if you have prayer needs, our prayer partners will be here after service. They would love to pray with you. And, and finally, this, uh, we've got uh, a brunch for you. Let's call it brunch, uh, breakfast at, at, at this time of day. Uh, uh, pancakes and sausage out in our outdoor court. H- hang out, enjoy that time together. God bless each and every one of you as you choose to cross over from death to life, as you allow the Spirit of God to fill you, transform you, and help you to truly experience life the way God wanted it to be. God bless you all. Have a great day.